G'day everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build a drown farm, which not only gives you up to 3,000 copper ingots an hour, but because these are naturally spawned drowned, and not zombies that got converted into drown, you also get 3 tridents, as well as 8 nautilus shells every minute. So, an underutilized fact is that drown can actually spawn in bubble columns, so you don't have to rely on them slowly falling down in water. Thanks to scaffolding, you can make these kind of one-way valves that allow for drowns to enter through the bottom, but once they're up the top, they're kind of trapped. If we combine the scaffolding technique with some water at the very top, we can see that the drowned don't get pushed? Hmm. Well, drowned seem to like not care about water too much if the water level is below Y63. So if we just move up our water kind of platform to a level above Y63, then the drowned are suddenly affected by the water, and we're able to push them wherever we want. In this case, into a nether portal. Once they've gone through the portal, they've got this 15 second cooldown, which we gotta cool down. So we slowly descend them using honey and cobwebs, as some zombies slip through the crack. Once they reach the bottom, they either push each other or pathfind into the portal. Back in the overworld, we notice that the player is hitting our armor stand with the sweeping edge enchantment. This allows him to hit all the zombies within the kind of one block radius from the armor stand. So this is a way that we can hit the zombies without them being able to hit us back. Now, as the player is going to starve to death, we need a beacon with regeneration to make sure they, they, they don't starve to death. But this all comes at a cost. Effort. These are the rates that you're going to be getting under the most favourable of conditions. A wide hook shaped river, huge roof for pack spawning, and a void perimeter. So, you may wonder how effective this farm is without a perimeter. Well, if you just decide to slap this into the sky, the rates of the farm plummet by only half. So yes, this design is definitely viable for your casual survival world. Now, I'm just going to give a quick overview on how to build this farm, as it's quite simple really. First of all, you want to search for a wide river with a kind of hook shape, such as this one. Mark roughly the centre of the hook and create a perimeter, roughly 270 blocks in length, centred on that point. Then use your F3 screen to mark out the river biome with soul sand. If you're building the one with the perimeter, place the soul sand at Y0 or Y5 if you don't want to break any bedrock. And if you're building the one in the sky, start the soul sand layer at Y85. So once you've outlined the river and filled it in with soul sand, you want to make an outline around the outline with the building block of your choice. That goes up to Y148 if you're building the version that's in the sky, and Y63 if you're building the version that is in the perimeter. Place water on the inside of this outline. Pillar up kelp around the edges, and this will create water sources and fill the entire area. Then you can remove the kelp. Now, cover up as much of the top water with scaffolding as possible. In some areas, you will need to pillar up blocks from the bottom. Now comes the tricky part. You need to encase the outline with nether portals. This can be done by splitting up the river into sections that are 16 wide. Next up, you want to section off small parts of the structure that the red lines cut off. This will make more sense later as more of the farm is built. Now go around and connect up all the edges to make one big enclosed shape. At this stage, you also want to place down a floor to fill in any gaps using a building block of your choice. Now starting from the edge of one of the strips, count over 8 blocks and place a strip of water too wide running down the middle. This will be a little bit tricky as the water doesn't make new water sources as it's over scaffolding. Next we return to those small sectioned areas that we worked on earlier. What you want to do here is lower the platform down by one block so the water can continue to flow.
Now go get your obsidian because now we need to replace all the red concrete outlines with nether portals. This is a pretty straightforward task, just remember to make the portal one block lower on the offcuts. To finish, place water on the portal borders to stop the drown from getting stuck. Note this won't work in all cases, but it's still worth doing. Also, place turtle eggs behind each portal to encourage the drown through. This is optional, as it doesn't affect them too much. Now go to the center point that we marked out earlier and pillar up until you reach Y132. Link the portal to the nether and be sure to align the X and Z coordinates. and then build up this system. Remember, you also got a world download in the description in case you get stuck on the little details. Now, go through some of the portals up top to test their link properly, and that's pretty much the farm. For increased rates, you can construct a roof above the farm. To make this, go to the top of the portals and count out 20 blocks. This will be the width of your roof. Then simply fill in the rest and you should see the rates of the farm increase by around 50%. Either way, you want to make a roof at least 15 blocks wide so the light level is zero in the farm. To build an accurate roof using the least amount of resources possible, I recommend measuring out from the corners every so often. With 1.18 on the horizon, I'm going to discuss this farm's use in the coming future. You may or may not have heard that drowned are able to spawn in dripstone caves, meaning that you are able to create more concentrated farms for them lower down in the world. While this bubble column concept that I've shown you today will still work in those caves, I actually recommend taking advantage of the wider rivers in 1.18 to build a squashed and flat drowned farm lower down in the world, without needing to map out a complex 3D biome such as the dripstone caves. To AFK, I recommend getting a sword with at least Mending, Sweeping Edge 3, Looting 3, and optionally you can have Sharpness 5 and Unbreaking 3. And that's about it. Um, if you've got any questions, just ask them down below in the comments, and thank you all a bunch for watching. Also, just before you go... Um... Um, never mind. <laughs>